Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again in today's video. I am a disabled veteran and recently moved into a nice HOA neighborhood and bought a house. My neighbor Karen hates disabled people and we constantly have arguments. At one point she decided to shoot me in the leg when I was outside with my wheelchair. Let's dive right into the story. So I had a woman as a neighbor that can only be described as a Karen in her behavior. She said exactly what she thought with no regard of it being offensive or morally wrong. She was entitled to the point that I would consider her deluded. The worst part of it all was that right in her crosshairs was me. I'm a veteran in South Africa and due to something that happened during active duty, I am now confined to a wheelchair. I live by myself though and manage to get around the house and neighborhood perfectly fine. I drive, I cook, I clean and anything else you can think of that every homeowner tends to do. I am fortunate enough to come from a family that was well off and when my father passed away I inherited a healthy amount of money. That plus my benefits allows me to live in a pretty nice neighborhood albeit next to the worst person in it. This neighborhood is part of an HOA and while they are pretty relaxed overall Karen is another story. She wants the neighborhood an exact way that really is not possible because people act like people. They are not NPCs like Karen wants to treat us. When things don't go her way, she screams and tells people that she's gonna kick them out of the neighborhood. Out of everybody though, Karen seems to hate me the most and it is not for any normal reason an HOA Karen would complain about because my lawn is not overgrown and I don't play music at night. I don't leave my trash cans out and I don't throw wild parties. Her only issue with me is that I'm in a wheelchair and thinks that means that I should not be in the neighborhood. One day Karen catches me outside and we have a back and forth that we have had more times than I care to count. Karen, I thought I told you that you are not welcome in this neighborhood. And then I said, I own my house here, that makes me a homeowner and wow, I guess that means I belong here. I cannot help being a smartass when it comes to Karen, especially after many times getting verbally attacked by her. Karen, people like you make me sick. Living in this neighborhood like you are normal and forcing us to look at you, it's disgusting. Me? Well, I could say the same thing about you. Karen, this neighborhood is gonna be devalued and it's all because of you. I want you to leave and go into a home or something where people like you belong. You should not be out here with normal people and letting all potential buyers see you. I am sick of being forced to lay eyes on you and I'm gonna make sure that you leave. Me, yeah, good luck with that. Oh, and maybe if the houses drop in price more, I can have some more disabled veterans move in, then we can surround you. Karen, F you, I wanted to give you an example just how much Karen doesn't care about being shown as a bigot and would say exactly what she is thinking. Also, that I have dealt with her so much it had become almost a joke to me, but I will admit that it does hurt for people to act like that. I just did not want to seem upset because Karen might have taken that as a win. Anyway, this time was a little bit different though because I did not know that she was actually gonna act on the threats she had been making since I moved in. At this point in the story, it was nice and warm out and I loved being outside in that kind of weather. I had a basketball hoop set up and enjoyed working on my form from my chair. It was good exercise for me and honestly made me feel like a little like my old self again. After I was done, I was just sitting and relaxing when I heard the unmistakable sound of a gunshot. My brain went into military mode and my immediate reaction was to hit the deck and try to grab my own gun. Only to realize that I did not have a weapon and was strapped into a chair. Looking down though, I could see that my leg was bleeding badly. I had been shot and started to panic a little bit about it. For anybody that might be confused, I am fully paralyzed and have zero feeling below my waist. That was why I did not know I got shot right away until I saw it. Also, even though I don't have feeling, the blood loss can still be extremely dangerous and I had to get to the hospital right away. I called for an ambulance and tried to look around to see what happened. That was when I noticed Karen standing in her yard holding a gun and waving at me with a cocky smile on her face. She really just shot me in order to try it and make me want to leave the neighborhood. I was very lucky and the bullet managed to go clean through my leg. 
Nerf damage obviously didn't matter and the bleeding was easily under control. I was beyond angry though and while I let Karen get away with treating me like this before, I was not gonna let her get away with this one. I filed a police report saying that I know exactly who shot me and that I was scared that she was attempting to actually kill me. Guns are taken seriously here, especially if somebody was shot in the process. Like I said before too, it was a nice neighborhood so people had money and did not want a shooter living on the block. The police did end up doing a raid on her house and found the gun that she shot me with. Not only that, but they found way more guns ranging from handguns to a rifle. Now she was already going to be arrested for shooting me and possibly attempted murder if we could get it to stick. The guns though became a huge problem because she did not have a single permit for any of them. I think they found 10 guns in total and each one of them was illegal. That meant each one of them came with their own report of an illegal weapon that was gonna be sent to the court. She was charged overall with attempted murder and 10 different counts of having an illegal gun. She got sentenced to 10 years in jail and she was shocked when that verdict came in. She really did not have a defense in the matter except for going on another rant about me being disabled and not belonging in the neighborhood. That I was a bad person and she needed guns because she feared I had one and would hurt her with it. Little tip for everybody out there reading, if you show in court that you are entitled and against certain groups of people, it's not gonna go well for you. She even tried to get the rest of the HOA to back her up, but they wanted nothing to do with any of this. They said that they did not condone her having weapons and were separating Karen and the HOA from each other entirely. She did not get officially kicked out because going to jail did that on its own. As for her house, it went up for sale eventually and a nice couple ended up moving in afterwards. They did not have any problems with me, which I was very grateful for. Also, I looked online for fun to see what her house sold for and I can tell you for sure that me existing in this neighborhood did not devalue it one single bit. I have a feeling if this couple was told about the crazy ex-owner and her gun collection, they might have gotten it for cheaper though. And the next one is titled, Karen finally gets arrested. So I used to work as a cashier in a supermarket. This story took place on my fourth day of working there and my second day working at a cash register on my own without a supervisor sitting next to me teaching me the ropes. Yes, I had two days of training. I'm sure most of you will figure out in which country I live from the following explanation. It will become relevant later. Supermarkets in my country are a zoo on a regular day. However, Thursdays and Fridays are absolute mayhem at the store and a special kind of hell. Fridays, the store closes two hours before sundown as do most stores in this country. During winter, this means around 14 o'clock and in summer closer to 16.30. And by the way, Ripe Stars, if you can tell what kind of country OP is from, let me know in the comments. Either way, people get crazy on Fridays trying to get all their shopping done and get home in time to cook dinner. If you can avoid coming to the store on Friday, please do so at all costs and I always told people after this day. The reason Thursdays are hell is because we get all the customers who don't want to come on Friday. Now this was early evening on a Thursday at a time when the store is absolutely jam-packed. We had 10 checkout lines open and and every line had at least six to seven people in line. Basically, if you are stuck with a slow cashier, there is nowhere else to go unless you have 10 items or less. Everything is going well until I get a customer with two shopping carts full of items, mostly non-perishable items. These are large carts you find around big stores in the US like Walmart. I found out later that he buys this for a community center in his neighborhood and he fills up their pantry twice a year. Actually a nice guy. He greeted me very politely and then said the most dreaded words I could have heard that night. This will be a delivery. Just a quick break from the story to explain why this was so dreaded, especially on a day like today. So when we get a delivery, the cashier would call a helper from the store to help bag the groceries. Usually people do their own bagging. The bags would then be placed in plastic containers and containers would then be placed on top of each other and taken to the bag fridge until delivery. A regular delivery is usually between 3 to 5 crates. Each crate has a number which then I have to input all of them into the computer along with correct delivery address and phone number and print out with the receipt and place copies in the crates. Even for a small delivery, this always takes extra time. Back to the story, this guy has two full cards and wants a delivery. I say, sure, no problem, and then I turn to everyone else in line and let them know that this is a delivery and it will take just a bit longer than usual and apologize for any delay this may cause. We always 
always do this so customers will be aware of the delay and can move to another cash register if they are in a hurry. This is when the whole line groans simultaneously. I don't blame them, there was nowhere else to go. I could see every one of them craning their necks to check out other lines and they all decided to stay. So I started scanning as fast as I can. I'm pretty good with numbers, so even though it is my fourth day, I remember many of the codes and things are moving rather quickly, so I get to a point where the beggar cannot keep up with all the items, and the area to the left of me where I place all the scanned items is just a mountain of cans and bags of chips and whatnot. I cannot even scan another item because they are falling back onto my scale. At this point I stop and ask if he wants help begging. The customer and the beggar are both appreciative and I help bag groceries for a few minutes. Just enough to clear some space so I can continue scanning items. This happens every few minutes, it gets full, I stop to help, clear some space and keep going. This is where the Karen comes into play. She is maybe early 40s, long brown hair and looks nothing like Karen. Except for the way she was standing with one hand on a hip that extended so far to the side, I was not sure how she is still standing. She is in my line, about 5-6 to six people in front of her still. This is the conversation that follows. Karen, hello, what are you doing? Me not answering because I didn't think she was talking to me, I keep scanning. Karen, excuse me. What kind of a cashier are you? Why aren't you doing your job? Stop being lazy and do your job. She screams at the top of her lungs. Me, I'm sorry ma'am, I'm just trying to... That's not your job. You are a cashier. Do your job. Do your job. I realize now after reading so many Reddit stories that this would have been a perfect chance for some malicious compliance. I'm sure some of you hope that I did just what Karen wanted. Too bad I did not know about it then, or that it was only my fourth day on the job. That is not what happened, although I dream sometimes that I did just that. Sit back and sip my coffee until the space cleared for more scanned items. You know, being a cashier. Next time, me, I'm just helping to move things along faster. If this is a problem or you're in a hurry, feel free to move to another line. I'm sure another cashier would be more than happy to serve you. I may sound like I'm the a-hole with this line, but I said it really nicely, not sarcastic at all. All. Obviously that did not help. Karen, not listening anyway and having none of it, just do your damn job. You're a cashier, what's wrong with you? Are you stupid? You should be fired. I stop listening at this point and don't answer as I am still helping to back and scan as fast as possible knowing it's not gonna help anyway. However, I see one of my managers, let's call him Joe, walk up to Karen. Joe is great by the way. Always helping the workers. Joe, what seems to be the problem here? Karen still yelling. Your cashier is awful. She is lazy and she is not doing her job. You should fire her. Tell her to do her job. She is not doing her job. She repeated that a few times like a broken record. Joe looks over at me for a second, understands exactly what's happening, turns to Karen and says, can't you see she's trying to help? She is trying to make this go much faster. Now Karen starts screaming words, I'm assuming, but I couldn't really make them out. She was practically foaming at the mouth. Joe tries to calm her down by explaining, or trying to, how me begging items is actually helping and this makes Karen even more irate if you cannot believe it. Spit is flying from her mouth, arms are flailing, screaming like a banshee and suddenly I notice an older woman, nice old lady, must have been around 80 years old, trying to get Karen's attention by tapping her on the shoulder. It takes a few tries but she finally gets her attention and spins her around by her shoulder. NOL, hey Karen, Karen excuse me, Karen, Karen, what? NOL, your daughter is crying. This is when the entire store seemed to have stopped talking all at once like someone pressed mute and turned off the volume. The sea of people in front of me parts a bit and we all look down and see a little girl who couldn't have been older than four clutching her mother's thighs, bawling her eyes out, snot coming out of everywhere, hyperventilating. This girl was terrified and I cannot blame her. Seeing her mother go off like that must have been terrifying. And she has no idea what's happening. She is in a huge store where she knows no one and she is practically invisible. This silence lasted an entire two seconds because that is when Karen started yelling at Joe. Karen, look what you did. You and your stupid lazy cashier made my daughter cry. And a bunch of other crazy sounds that were perhaps supposed to be words. Things happened in slow motion for the next few seconds. She started to swing towards Joe. Joe is not a big guy but he is bigger than Karen that's for sure and he is not easily intimidated because it is not his first Karen. She would have decked him right in the face if the NOL had not grabbed her in a barrel 
Starhawk to stop her. And yes, she did. I had to pick up my jaw off the floor. At that point, other customers got involved trying to peel off the NOL from Karen and stop Karen from trying to kill Joe and from Joe trying to kill Karen because he was fuming by then. At this point, I saw mall security storm the castle, our store was inside a mall and the sea of people just surrounded Karen and I could not really see much of anything anymore. Kind of like football players when there is a fumble and they all jump on the ball. By the sound of yelling getting farther and farther away, I figured Karen was being led either to the back office or to the mall security office, which is the mall jail. This entire time this is happening, I'm still begging and scanning items and I'm about halfway through this customer's purchase. I finish up with him with no more problems, he was very nice and thanked me profusely for helping with the bags even though technically it was not part of my job. He said I was the fastest and nicest cashier he ever had the pleasure of meeting. I was just happy to help. No one else in my line complained, I actually got compliments from people about keeping my composure. Apparently many cashiers in my country think it is okay to yell at customers and just be plain nasty. I worked in customer service for many years prior and I have never yelled at a customer even if they deserved it. Once the rush died down a bit, I went for a break. I met another employee in the back room and I started to tell him of what just happened when he cut me off. She was yelling at you? Ha! <laughs> I heard that, well everyone heard that, but I had no idea what the hell was happening. He told me that police was called and Karen was escorted out of the store and the mall in handcuffs. I filled him in on everything and we spent the next 30 minutes laughing. I don't know what happened with the child, I'm assuming they called another family member to pick her up or something. I also don't know what happened with Karen after that since I ended up working there for another year and I never saw her again. Hopefully she learned to do her grocery shopping on Tuesday and Wednesday. Or she was possibly in prison or house arrest. This was the first Karen I had the displeasure of meeting while working at that store but definitely not the last. To those of you who read the entire story, thank you for sticking with me through to the end. I hope it was worth it and you got some sense of pleasure or justice from the end result. And yeah, ripe stars, that was probably one of the most elaborate Reddit Karen stories we have ever read. If you have ever come across a Karen like this in real life, especially in a supermarket, then please let us know what happened to you and her. Personally, I am glad that I've never seen a person like this in any supermarket I've ever visited in the world. I have seen the occasional I don't work here lady situation, but never anything like this and I am quite happy about that, let me tell you. Neighbor cut down my hedge without permission, I make him pay $100,000. There is not much backstory needed for this story, so I will cover what I think is important. Now, while some people have fences or scrubs creating barriers between houses, me and my neighbor's property are divided by a line of beautiful red oak trees. All of these trees are on my side of the property line though and it is my job to maintain them. I do a good job with that and make sure the trees are healthy and any dead branches are removed. Me and my neighbor don't talk much and I don't see any issues about it. He never even mentioned the trees before I ended up going on vacation for a couple of days and coming back to a complete disaster. Yep, the entire row of trees is gone, stumps and all. I loved those trees and was completely devastated. My family had owned this property for generations and were the ones that planted those trees to begin with. Usually I would wait to calm down, but I had no desire to do that and instead went straight to my neighbor to see what the hell had happened. Me? Why are all of my trees gone? Neighbor, don't be walking onto my property and start screaming at me. Me? I leave for three days and come back to find all the red oaks that my family planted completely destroyed. Neighbor, those things were a total eyesore. I was not getting enough sun on that side of my yard. That doesn't mean you have the right to just cut them down. They are on the property line, so they belong to both of us and I had them removed. No, those were on my property, I exclaimed. Neighbor, well they are gone now and there isn't anything you can do about it. It cost quite a pretty penny too and I slipped an invoice into your mail for what you owe me. Why would I owe you anything? I asked. Neighbor, to pay your half for the trees being taken down. He had no remorse for what he had done and now expected me to actually share in the cost. I got home and looked for that letter so I could see what company came and destroyed my property without my consent. 
I called them and after yelling at several people finally got in touch with someone who knew what was going on. He said that the man claimed they were on his property and had no idea the trees belonged to me. He offered to pay for landscaping to cover up the horrible dirt patches where the trees once stood but I declined and hung up. Looking back, I know that I could have probably sued them too for not making sure it was the man's property. I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt though, as they were not the ones I was truly mad at. I knew that I needed to get in touch with quite a few people until my revenge could be fully realized, so I first sent a request for someone to come and see where the property line was. Like I thought, it was a good 5 feet away from where the trees had been planted and clearly on my property. Then I called in a tree adjuster, I guess also called surveyor, to see the cost of what those trees were worth. He was expensive to get out there, but at this point my revenge did not have a price tag on it. He told me from pictures and documents that I had that they were not red oaks, but scarlet oaks. I don't really know the difference, but I thought I would just mention that fun fact. I thought that I would get a couple grand out of my neighbor, so I could pay to have trees replanted, but it turns out though that the specific trees I had were part of a rare breed of scarlet oaks. Taking their age into account, he said that the trees combined were worth roughly $80,000. To say I was shocked was an understatement and asked if he could put that in official writing. I explained the situation and he was more than willing to make an official document for me. Now that all the pieces were together, I started my revenge in the form of a giant lawsuit. I knew that he had no defense and that I was going to absolutely destroy him. I was suing him for the cost of the trees, the cost to plant new trees, the cost for the tree adjuster and for my lawyer fees. It would be going to be an absolute bloodbath and I couldn't wait. I showed up to court with all of my documents and presented my whole case in front of the judge. Then it was his turn to try and weasel his way out of it. Neighbor, they were made as the border between the two properties, so the actual property line doesn't matter. Judge, that property line is legally where the border is. It doesn't matter where the trees were planted. Neighbor, your honor, there's no way that those trees were worth 80k. It is clear that he's making up numbers to try and sue me for more than it was worth. Judge, I see that the document in front of me is from a legitimate source. The court finds the $80,000 price valid. Is there anything in your defense that shows a reasonable cause for you to destroy your neighbor's property? Neighbor, they were a complete eyesore and kept all the sun out of my yard. Judge, I've heard quite enough. I am granting... OP, $100,000 to cover all his costs. You are lucky that you are not getting any jail time or fines for trespassing. My neighbor was stunned when she dropped the figure on him because we both knew that he didn't have that kind of money. He was going to need to sell his assets and maybe even his house to pay me back. He came running to me several times begging to pretend that he paid me so we could both get on with our lives. I told him no dice and I wanted all of the money that he owed me. Watching him go through misery just like I had made me feel so much better about the whole thing. Even though I planted new trees, they will take a long time to get to the majestic beauty the old ones wear. So even though I ended up with my revenge, I still have to see outside every day a reminder of what he did. Things went on for months in confusion of what was going to happen until a deal was finally reached. The town was going to split his large property into two halves. The first he would have to sell off and the second half was going to go to me as part of the money I was owed. Now at least the property line is so far away from the trees that I don't have to worry about anyone thinking it is the border. The only thing I still have to do is figure out what I am going to use my newfound land extension for. If anyone has any suggestions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Once the trees grow in that area, it will be nice and shady. And yeah, ripe stars, I would say this is one of the perfect tree law revenge stories and it just shows us that you should never mess with a man or a woman's tree. It can literally ruin your life.
And with this we have reached the end of the video, however I want to ask you for a favor. If you have watched until here, please check out my new channel called The Readers, where I and other voice actors post daily stories that you will very much enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again tomorrow.